She now lives out of her car that I got her years back for Valentine's Day. And she is saying she's so sorry and misses me, saying she made a huge mistake. what's going on everybody hope everybody's feeling good hope everybody's doing well we are back with another story post guys i'll put this up on the screen if you want to check it out but you guys read the title let's just get into it so reddit surviving infidelity okay this is seriously weird and messy okay this is a stumble in a bit of a story me, a 46-year-old male, her, 36-year-old female, have been separate for four years now. She left me for the CEO of her work that ended up destroying her life. She now lives out of her car that I got her years back for Valentine's Day. I kicked her out of my house because she wouldn't stop. Years of therapy, block number, and social media, moving on. A few weeks ago, I am at a bar I go to regularly, down the block from my house, and she comes up behind me and pokes me in the back. I immediately ask, why are you here? She just wants to talk. I am not having it, so she leaves. An hour later, the bartender was asking me if I lost my keys. They are hers. I unblock her for the time being, letting her know I had her keys. Shows up at my house the next day to retrieve them, and that's all I wanted from, from the interaction. She refuses to leave for almost an hour and continues to try to talk to me. The conversation is all a downhill slide until I seriously have to force her to leave. A week later, she messages me because I unblocked her. And she is saying she's so sorry and misses me, saying she made a huge mistake. I reply conservatively and tell her my hand was out for years to help her, but when it finally closed and I was done, she wanted me back. She is also now seeing an old friend of mine. Gross. And this is just messing with my head. I told her that her momentary lapse of reason is hurtful. Has no follow through. She missed me with that crap. She merely replied with, okay, that was it. I blocked her again and think this is just the most toxic, confused person I have ever dealt with in my life. Should I hear her out? Or is this just more manipulation? I think this is her rock bottom and I don't believe that someone should use me as their rope swing. My apologies if this is confusing. It's confusing to me also. Edit. She reached out the same day to another mutual friend of ours, my best friend, and told him she needed a shoulder to cry on because the other friend she was seeing dumped her. I just now found this out. This all makes sense now. Wow. Let me give my thoughts. So first things first, should you have a conversation with her was your question or should you hear her out? No, absolutely not. Especially, especially now you found out she got dumped by the friend you thought she was dating. She got dumped by him. Now she's crawling back. Her life got ruined dating a, the CEO of her company. She ended up homeless, sleeping in her car, started dating your friend, got dumped by him. Now she's crawling back to you. Dude, if the bartender came to me and said, hey, are these your keys? And I'm like, oh man, those are my ex-wife's or my separated wife's keys. I don't care. If she put me through all that, I would say, nope, they aren't mine. No, screw her. She did you wrong. Forget it. I'm curious to see what's going on in these comments. Let's check out the comments here. I guess she is at her rock bottom, but it is not your fault. 
She decided to leave you and now she has to face the consequences of her actions. If I were you, I would be adamant about having no contact with her. If she realizes her mistakes, that's good for her, but that does not give her the right to try to get back in your life after what she did. Not to mention, she's also seeing an old friend of yours. It might not even be a relationship and she's probably with him for security reasons. That's exactly why she was with him and she got dumped. Here he is. That's exactly what I was thinking. I believe that she realizes wholeheartedly that the grass is not greener, but still has a delusion that a fairy tale is out there somewhere. Don't have the immediacy of who I am and the stability. Also, dude, she is seeing, even though an old friend is kind of an idiot. Dude, she doesn't miss you. She misses the lifestyle you provided for her. Absolutely. She sleeps in her car. <laughs> Well then, it's her mess. Let her deal with it. I'm afraid that if you hear her out, it might influence you to help her. Yep. Someone said, no contact means no contact. It's used to heal oneself and move on to better things in life. You two have no biological connection, kids. So why not stay no contact like forever? Absolutely. This might be her lowest point of life, but it's up to her to face it like you did. You fought and came up victorious. Now it's her turn. And if you think listening to her would give you closure, then, then don't bother. Because closure don't exist. It is about moving on with your life. Just know what she did. Just know what she did to you was dirty. But it couldn't break you. Ooh, I like that. I like that. And on that note, guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. That's right, sir. You're absolutely right. You went through something, man, and, and you didn't let it break you. If you let her come back into your life, she's going to cause more destruction. I promise you. I've experienced it. It's not worth it. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments, and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Subject, how I did not intend to get revenge on an ex, but I did. I would like to remain anonymous. What's going on, True? I've been listening to your channel for a very long time, and I have been debating on whether or not to share my story because it's quite long, and I've been accused of making the revenge part up. Oh man. There's no real way to prove that I'm not making the last part up other than try to provide as much detail as I can without giving up my identity. My story starts at the very end of my first year of high school. I started to crush on this girl that was two grades ahead of me. She was a bit quiet and reserved while I was a wannabe class clown. I ended up winning her over and she admitted that she liked me back. The first red flag that I was blind to was that she only had about two female friends and the rest were male. At first I was thinking, well, two female friends, that's not bad, but then you said the rest were male. The fact that she has male best friends and friends, yeah. That is, a, that is a huge red flag, if anyone doesn't know. Um, there was one guy in particular, we'll call him James, that had a massive borderline obsessive crush on her. It wasn't a big deal at first because the school year was about to end, so we weren't going to see this guy for a while. Then the next school year started, and the drama began immediately. Of course, James absolutely hated me. He was constantly telling people he was going to whoop my A and even said he was going to end me one day. Oh man, he's making threats like that. Wow. I expressed to her that I didn't like her hanging out with him anymore, but she pulled the stereotypical, but he's my friend excuse. The other bad thing was that because he was in her friend group, they were constantly trying to convince her to break up with me and date him instead. After a while, she started to become extremely distant. I specifically remember one day in which we were supposed to go to the movies, but she stood me up. She eventually broke up with me and admitted that the day she stood me up was because she went to the movies with James. A few months went by and she started to send feelers out to my friends to try to talk to me again. Of course, I was a stupid high school kid, so I spoke with her and she cried and apologized. After scolding her for a little bit, we eventually got back together. After we got back together, she admitted to me that during the time we were broken up, she and James tried dating, but it didn't work out because he was too immature. The rest of the year went by drama-free. 
Then the problem started again as soon as she graduated. She broke up with me because she wanted to focus on going to college and did not want to worry about having a boyfriend who was still in high school. A few months went by again, and once again she sent Felix to my friends to try to get a hold of me. She again apologized and cried asking to see if we could get back together. Like the idiot that I was, I took her back again, but this time we only stayed together for about a month. She again started acting really distant and not talking to me for days, avoiding hanging out, and generally having a bad attitude. She then broke up with me for the last time. Proof, guys, you, you keep taking them back, she's going to keep doing the same things and it'll progressively get worse. They'll keep doing the same exact thing they did to you before, but it'll get a bit worse each time. Don't go back. Move on. Some time went by and I ended up finding out that she and James were officially dating. The part that really ticked me off was that the two of them started to, to visit my high school every single week just to walk around holding hands with the intention of me seeing them. These were college aged people who attended college hours away making the drive to my city just to rub their new relationship in my face. Of course it bothered me, but the years went by and I eventually graduated as well. This is the part where it's going to seem like I'm making it up, but I promise I'm not. I ended up going to a small local college in my city because I couldn't afford anything else. After a few years of attending that college, I randomly ran into my ex in a hallway. I called out her name and she started acting all nervous and fidgety, telling me that James might see us. I was asking her why she was no longer at her college and she stated that it was because she had some health problems and wanted to attend school close to home in case of an emergency. I also was asking her if he also attended the school. She said that he did not and would only pick her up and drop her off certain days. I started running into her at the same hallway about twice a week and we slowly started having conversations. She confided in me that she and James were broken up at the moment but we're working on fixing things and getting back together. One day I invited her out to lunch and she accepted. Then she vented even more and told me that even though she and James dated for, for way longer than she and I ever did, she could never get over the fact that she originally chose me over him. She stated that they were constantly arguing over that amongst other disagreements. She even said that things got physical on her end and he even hit her back once. At this point in my life, I had absolutely no interest in her. I was currently trying to talk to a girl that I liked in one of my classes. So I had no romantic intentions with my ex other than hanging out. One day I gave her a ride home, but we stopped at my apartment first and we watched some TV. Well, one thing led to another and we ended up sleeping together. Yes, I know. I want to say she was awkward about it. If anyone has ever watched the movie No Strings Attached, there's a scene in which Ashton Kusher character is making out with his assistant and she keeps saying, oh my god, this is happening over and over. Well, it was kind of like that. I honestly meant nothing to me, but it must have to her because she told me that she completely ended things with James shortly after that. I won't lie. It was very satisfying for me to see the text messages he would send her cursing her out after he saw that she and I became friends on social media. At this point, I decided to get my revenge on her as well and just used her for play while I was still trying to win over the girl from my class. This went for a few weeks. My ex started becoming really clingy and was constantly trying to get me to hang out with her and walk to class together. She was constantly sending me text messages and attempting to have heart-to-heart -heart conversations in which she would tell me that she was developing feelings for me again and that if I didn't feel the same way to let her know right then and there to spare her feelings. She would do this stupid awkward pause in between her sentences like if she was struggling to get her words out or something. I would usually avoid or change the subject. Eventually the girl in my class agreed to start dating me. So I knew I had to end things with my ex. So I started acting distant, avoiding her for days, and having a bad attitude just like she had done to me. One day she ran into me in the hallway and started walking next to me to get my attention, but I just acted like she wasn't there and kept walking. That afternoon she sent me this novel of text message basically stating that she was tired of me playing with her feelings. 
and that she was done. I remember I texted back, so you are not going to talk to me anymore? And she said, do you really think I would stick around after the way you've treated me? To which I said, I'm just surprised you finally got the hint. To which she never responded. After that, I never spoke with her again. I would see her in the hallway or parking lot sometimes, but she would avoid looking at me. And that was that. How I didn't mean to originally get revenge, but I did. If any high school kids, particularly male, are listening to this and are dating or, or thinking of dating an older girl, I would say it's not worth it because there's so much drama that you can give yourself when you can just focus on girls your age. Hope you guys enjoyed the story. Wow. Let me give my thoughts. nice man I, <laughs> I i really enjoyed this story i really really enjoyed this story payback man payback you got her back you know listen you 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 ended up taking her back a couple times early on and you know that was a mistake but eventually you moved on right and she moved on you moved on and somehow you guys just crossed paths again you saw an opportunity and you took it like I always say, the best revenge is moving on and becoming successful and doing your thing, right? But when you're presented with an opportunity to get back, and, it, and it's like a little, it's a petty get back. You did exactly what she did to you, right? You know, nothing too harmful. You know, you didn't, you didn't, you know, damage her car or anything like that. You simply got her to want you bad, desperately. And you used her to move on to someone else and you did and you broke it off with her and you did the way you did it was just how she did you she, she was distant she was like calling off dates and things like that i love this revenge story this is a great revenge salute man um you said you said so people people often think that oh that didn't happen you made that up it's because i guess because you know you happened to cross paths with her again and and then you used her the same way she it's i believe you it's very possible it's, we're not gonna act like it's not possible salute to you man great revenge i like it i absolutely like it man thanks for sending in this story i really appreciate it <laughs> great story man whenever if you ever want to send in another email maybe give advice whatever you want to do you have something you think that'll be great to share on on the channel go ahead feel free to send it man send it to the email uh guys it goes for everyone else anyone who wants to send in a story send it to true story at gmail.com here i'll put it on the screen that's true story at gmail.com and i will catch you guys at the next one <laughs>